Jesus, Prince of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. My hand to see the passion of the Lord, and the Lord of the Lord, and the Lord of the Lord. Il est vous jamais Satan va vous obliger prisonnier si on ne vous cause pas chantelle. Ramaya da sinti libo chaplan graduze. Reprenne la fille Santa Nini Kiri. Matan zanduro bo chanta Ramaya suta dele libo chan. Father, we give you praise for this unique opportunity. Lord, we thank you for this privilege to be here. Lord, we thank you for your grace that is abundant to us. Blessed be your name, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, you are worthy of our praise. Lord, we worship you. Father, we celebrate you. Let's exalt the name of the Lord and give him praise this evening. He's worthy. There is none like him, none besides him, none like unto him. He's a great and mighty God. He is beautiful beyond description. He's the holy wise God. The mighty, mighty man in battle, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, we celebrate and worship you. We give you praise and adoration this evening. We thank you for the privilege to be alive. We thank you for the gift of life this morning. Father, we thank you this evening for the gift of life. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for a new season that you're ushering us into. We thank you, O oh God, because you, O oh God, have kept your promises and covenant concerning us. Lord, we worship you. Blessed be your holy name in Jesus' mighty name we worship. Amen. I just want us to make our confession of faith as believers before the Lord this evening and say, Father, I believe your word. I believe the integrity of your word. I believe your word is true. I believe your word is yea and amen in Christ Jesus. I believe that Jesus died and he resurrected for my justification. Mm -hmm. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he was born and he lived on the earth. He died for my sins. He saved me from my sins and he, and he resurrected for my justification. I believe that I've been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, the kingdom of your dear son, Jesus. I believe in your precious promises concerning my life. I believe that your turn towards me is of peace and not of evil. I believe that you are the God of all flesh. I believe that you are the ruler of the affairs of men. I believe that you are the commander of the universe. I believe in you, Lord Jesus. I worship you. I give you praise and adoration. I believe your word is true. I believe in the testimony that you testified of your son. Lord, I believe you. Lord, I believe you. I believe you. That's the confession that I'm making before the Father. Make your confession of faith before the Father. As a believer, what are you professing? Open your mouth and declare. Declare, declare before the Lord. Lord, I believe you. I believe your word. I believe your precious promises. I believe that you are the Lord. I believe you are the King. I believe that there is no God beside you. Lord, I worship you. I give you praise and adoration. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Compliments of the season. And it's such a beautiful moment to be alive. We thank him for his grace and his mercy, for his faithfulness. We thank him for how far he has brought us. The truth is, many a times we, we fail to understand that in the, in the world that we have him today, that everything that we, we were living for is just a product of grace. It's just a product of grace. Many people have passed on. And we are still alive because the grace of God is keeping us. And that's the sincere truth. One of the things that we'll be discussing tonight, which I believe we're, we're going to do more of discussion, in-depth discussion as Holy Spirit will will tonight. And it's for us to understand that it's not, it's not, it's not, um, God has not, God is not, um, God has not brought us to the world and just left us like that. There is something that God has given to us. There is something he has deposited inside of us. There is something that we carry uh, as, as, as a believer that is potent, that is powerful, that is the whole essence of the life that we have in God. There is a life in God. If there's any conviction that I have in my spirit that is very strong, a conviction I have in my life is that there is a life in God. There is a life in God that is true, that is real, that is very, very real, that is tangible, that can be substantiated. There is a life 
in God. And that is what we'll be discussing this evening. The life in God. The life in God. What is that life in God? What can that life do? What does that life translate to? What do we mean by the life in God? How can we assess this life in God? Last week on Voice from Horizon, we understood by the, by the leading of the Holy Spirit that there are dimensions of spiritual experiences in God. We realize that there's a, the way, the place for us to desire is the place of the overflow. At the point where we are no longer in control, where we are dipped into the water of the word of God and the spirit of the Lord that we do no longer have control, where we are so Im Im immersed in the presence of the Lord that is no longer about us, but it's all about him. That's what we discussed last week. And today we'll be looking at the life that life, that experience, what does it translate to? What is the result of that experience? Is it just for us to have a feel-good experience? Or what is it that that experience must translate to in our lives? We're going to go back to that Ezekiel chapter 47. And we're going to read from verse 7 to verse 12. Ezekiel chapter 47. The same, the same um, Ezekiel we read last week. But now we'll be reading verse 12. 7 to verse 12 and it says when I returned there along the bank of the river were very many trees on one side and the other then he said to me this water flows towards the eastern region goes down into the valley and enters the sea look at the direction of the water though this water flows towards the eastern region it goes down into the valley and it enters the sea when it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. And it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river goes, will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish because these waters go there. For they will be healed and everything will live wherever the river goes. It shall be that fishermen will stand by it from Engedi to Engram. They will the places for spreading their nets. Their fish will be of the same kind as the fish of the great sea, exceeding many, but its swarms and marshes will not be healed. They will be given over to salt. Along the bank of the river on the other side of the land will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Their leaves will not wither and their fruits will not fail. They will bear fruit every month because their water flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for medicine. Now we're going to leave that and we're going to go to a scripture that substantiates the discussion that we're going to be having this evening. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5 and we'll just, I'll, just, I'll, I'll just read from verse 9 to verse 12. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. He who believes in the Son of God as the witness in himself, he who does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his Son. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has this life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. Did we see that verse 11? And this is a testimony that God has given us eternal life. God has given us a life. It is called eternal life. The life in God is called eternal life because the life in God explains the kind of person God is. The life that we have in God is not a common life. It's not an ordinary life. It's not a temporal life. It's called eternal life or we could call it everlasting life. That is the life that we have in God. And in, verse, in this verse, John chapter 5, the Bible makes us understand and God makes us understand that God has given us something something unusual. He has given us this testimony. This is the testimony that we have. This is what we have as believers. This is our testimony. This is our joy. This is what has been given to us that makes us different from the world. He said God has given us eternal life. 
That is why I beg to disagree and I stand in contradiction to anyone that tells us that we have the same life, that we serve the same God. The God that I know, the God that I serve, testified of his son. It has he made a testimony of his son. And this is the testimony that God gave us. He has given us eternal life. And he just did not just give us eternal life. He gave us eternal life. And this life is in his son. That means you cannot have access to the life in my God if you don't have access to the life in his son. The son, the life is resident in his son, Jesus Christ. The life is in Christ. The life is resident in Him. The life cannot just be assessed anyhow. It cannot be assessed through any other means. It can only be assessed in His Son. And that is why I stand on this truth and this conviction according to the Word of God that any man that is not in Christ does not have access to the life that is in Christ. The life of God can only be assessed, assessed in Christ Jesus. And God has given us such, this, such a gift, such a unique gift, such an eternal gift. And he said this life is in the Son. He said he who has the Son has life. And he's not talking about just any life. He's not talking about the air that you're breathing in. He's talking about a life that is in God. The life of God. He's talking about eternal life. And he said, if you have the Son, you have life. And you who does not have the Son of God, does not have life. I love what was written here in 1 John chapter 3 and in verse 13. He talks about the attitude. He said, do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life. What the world is attacking about believers is the life that we carry. Why, do, why does the world hate you? They hate you because of the life you carry. It's not an ordinary life. It's eternal life. The life in Christ Jesus is not an ordinary life. He said in verse 13, 1 John chapter 3, verse 13, Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. We have eternal life abiding in us because we have Jesus. And this life is no ordinary life. I'm challenging you tonight. If you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you are just sitting around, you are carrying in you a life that is not ordinary. The world will hate you. They will hate what you stand for. They will hate your convictions. They will hate your belief. But that is why you have that life. You have that life to take a stand that is different. You have that life to represent a order, a movement that is different. You have that life to stand out. You have that life because you're a light. In John chapter 1, let's quickly run there and see what John says about that life. Introduction of that life. And he said in verse 1, John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life. In him was life. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. So the light that you carry is light. The light that you have is light. So there cannot be darkness around you. And that's why in 1 John chapter 3 that we first John chapter 3 that we read, he said that those that are of that, 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 that does not have this life, they are in death. They are in darkness. And remember, because we are in Christ Jesus, we have crossed from death to life. And this life is not just a life. An ordinary life. It is light. And the life was the light of men. 
and the light shines in the darkness and darkness did not comprehend it. This life that we have is light. And this light shines in darkness. Darkness cannot comprehend it. Why is it that darkness cannot comprehend it? Let's go back to Ezekiel chapter 47 that we read. And let us see the evidence of this life. What this life does. What this life can make happen. I run quickly to so verse Verse 8, Ezekiel 47, verse 8, then he said to me, This, this water flows towards the east, eastern region, goes down into the valley, and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. The life that you carry has the capacity to heal. The life that you carry that is light has the capacity to heal. That is why this life is light and this light shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it if that English is too big it simply means that darkness cannot understand it and that is why as a believer your life cannot be understood because of the kind of life that you carry if people can pin you down, if they can pin your life down to something, they can, they can, they can, they, they can grab hold of your life. I know the scripture that talks about the, the, the person that walks in the spirit is like a wind. The Bible describes us like a wind. It, can you trap a wind? You can't. That's the kind of life we carry. It's the kind of life that brings healing. Your life is not ordinary. Don't settle for an ordinary life. The life in God is not an ordinary life. The life that you have in God is such a powerful life. What you have in you is a spring. It's a well spring. It springs unto everlasting. It cannot be exhausted. It can't be exhausted. You continue to spring. The kind of life you carry continues to spring and it continues to bring healing. The waters around it are healed. So wherever you go to, wherever you flow to, because your life as one that carries God, the life you have in God is, is like a, a, a river of water. Wherever you flow to, there is healing. Such is the life you have in God. Such is the kind of power in that life. And he said, and it shall be that every living thing that moves. I love this. He said, and it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the rivers go, will leave. It will leave. In 1 John chapter 3, he said, we have passed from death to life. We have moved from death to life. Wherever we go to, there is life. Because in him is life. And the life is the light of men. And this is the testimony that God gave of his son. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. So whoever has his son has life. The life that you have in God brings about healing. It brings about restoration. Wherever you go, there must be life. Every death situation must give way. Darkness must give way to your light. That is what you are called to. And you have to be conscious of it. The devil wants to entrap you in ignorance. You must be liberated by the truth of the word of God. Because it's the word of God, the truth of God's word that sets free. It's the one that liberates. And that's why God is bringing this knowledge and truth your way today. So that you'll be liberated from the shackles of hell. So that you'll be liberated from the ignorance that the devil wants you to be entrapped in. Understand that you carry in you a life that brings light. A life 
that brings about healing and restoration. And it must start with you as the carrier of that life. Everything around you that has hitherto not been all right and been experiencing a death situation will, should receive life because of the life that you carry. You are no ordinary person. He said, wherever the rivers go, mm -hmm. will leave. There will be a very great multitude of fish. There will, there will be scarcity. There can be scarcity where this life is. Remember Jesus when he was walking on the face of the earth as a carrier of this life. He talks about him. He had a spirit without measure. And wherever he was going, there was no scarcity. There was no scarcity. When Jesus appeared at the, re at, at the river bank and Peter and his brother were trying to, they were they are told all night. They caught nothing. When Jesus appeared with the life and light in him, he said, cast your net to the other side. And they caught multitude. Multitude. That it was, it was a net breaking harvest. There was great multitude of fish because the life is there. Is it that there were no fishes in the river? There were. But the commander of the fishes had not arrived. Wherever you step to in this season, as a carrier of God's life, there must not be scarcity. Amen. You must call the things that are not as though they were. You must declare and make it happen because you are a carrier of that life. There must not be scarcity. Mm -hmm. there, must, there must be increase. There must be more than enough. When Jesus was preaching and the, the people were hungry, he requested, what, do, what is available? And they brought it. And he blessed it. And he asked them to share. And there was 12 baskets left. After the people ate and they were full, there were 12 baskets left. There was no scarcity. There was no scarcity. That's the life you are called to. Wherever you are, there must not be scarcity. The life you carry, God said concerning himself, the cattle upon a thousand eels are mine. He said, ask of me, I will give you nations as your inheritance. That's the God that you serve and the life that you have of him is not a life of scarcity. There will be a very great multitude of fish because these waters go there. When you go there, situations must change. When you go there, darkness must not be able to comprehend. What is happening? When you go there, there should be change. Because you are there. Because you carry in you the waters of life. And wherever these waters go, there should be great multitude of fishes. Wherever these waters go, there should be life. Wherever these waters go, there should be healing. You're a carrier of a great power called the life of God, eternal life. And that what he has given to us. And he said, because this waters go there, for they will be healed and everything will live wherever this river goes. It shall be that fishermen will stand by it. You are not called to an ordinary life, you're called to a life of influence. Jesus said to Peter, follow me and I will make you fish as a man. Your life must have influence beyond what your understanding can carry. Because you are a carrier of this life. You must have influence because you are a witness. You are a witness of this life. Your life must carry influence. The river of your life must have fishermen attending to it. Don't say to yourself, I'm but 
one small. Who am I? I'm going to tell you who you are tonight. You are a carrier of the life of God. You are a carrier of heaven's resources. You are a carrier of a life that is beyond you. You are a carrier of God's life, eternal life. You are a carrier of God. Don't let the devil box you. Don't let the devil limit your influence. Don't let the devil tell you this is all. Don't let the devil set a parameter around your life. Break out. Break out with this truth that I'm a carrier of God's life. And God's life cannot be held back. It can, if a parameter cannot be, be placed around the life of God. Remember the early apostles when they started witnessing and spreading the word. You know what they did to them? They put them in prison so that the word can stop. You might not be put in a physical prison. Maybe the devil has arranged a financial prison for you. Maybe it's a marital prison. You've been single for so long. <laughs> You have to break out because you know you carry the life of God. You say to yourself, I cannot be held in this marital prison. I cannot be held in this financial prison because I'm a carrier of a life that cannot be bound. Your life can't be bound by anything. Jesus was not restrained. He was not constrained by anything. He went around doing good. Healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. Casting out devils. Healing the sick. Proclaiming the kingdom of God. You are called by God to a life that is bigger than this. Refuse to be in bondage. Refuse to allow the devil to set a perimeter around your life. Refuse to be in that financial prison. Refuse it. With the knowledge and the truth of God's word tonight. Say to yourself, I carry the life of God. I am bigger than this. Mm -hmm. I am bigger than this. Your influence cannot... Because the devil is afraid of your influence. That's why he's, he's keeping you in a prison. When the apostles were in that prison, they, they were not looking at where they were. And the Bible said they began to... They began to pray. And an angel came to open the door of the prison. And they came out. And they went and asked God for boldness to reach out. To have influence. Why not pick that word and run with it? Pick that word and run with it. I refuse to be in the prison of my mind. I refuse to be in the prison of finances. I refuse to be in a marital prison. I refuse to be in a prison of childlessness. Of barrenness. I refuse to be in that prison. The devil will not put me in that prison. I am coming out. I am stepping out. Because the life in me is bigger than this. It's bigger than this. The life you carry is bigger than this. It's bigger than your present situation. It's bigger than what you're going through. It's bigger than what you're experiencing right now. What the devil wants to do is to shut down your influence and keep your mouth shut. And, 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 and corner in that life that you carry so that it won't have expression. But what is the beauty of a river that does not flow? It becomes like a pond. It starts stinking. It starts smelling. The devil wants your life to stink. He wants it to smell. He wants your life to be contaminated. And that's why he's not releasing you to flow. That's why he's putting you in a prison. Break out. Amen. Allow the spirit to break out in you. So that your influence, so that your river can flow. He said, out of your belly shall flow. Rivers. Of living waters. Let that river flow in you. Amen. Out of your belly shall flow. Let it flow. The devil has kept you in that prison for so long. He has kept your waters. Break out. Allow that life to break out in you. No holds 
bad. You enter in 2018 with confidence in God that I may carry out the life of God and nothing is going to hold me back. I'm not going to be in a spiritual prison anymore. I'm breaking out. My water is flowing. My river is flowing. My river is flowing. My river is flowing. You can make that confession. Continue to say until you see that there is a breakout in your spirit. My river is flowing. My river is flowing. My river is flowing in the name of Jesus. Let your river flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Because it's when your river flow. It's when your river flow that you can have influence. It's that is when you can experience the true life in God. And it says, it says, wherever the river goes, everything will leave wherever the river goes. It shall be that fishermen will stand by it from Enkidu to England. There will be places for spreading their nets. Their, their, fishy, their fish will be of the same kind as the fish of the Gracie. Exceedingly many. When you allow that river in you to flow out, when you allow that river in you to flow, when you allow the Spirit to have expression in your life, you will see that your influence will know no bound. You will see that the experience of your life, you will see that there is true liberty. Where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. You understand that you, you understand the liberty in the spirit. You understand the liberty that your life commands. You understand the true essence of that life. You understand the freedom that is in that life. You understand that that life is no ordinary life. So much in the life of God. So much in the life of God. We must never take it for granted. We must not allow the devil to, the, to allow us to chicken out on the kind of influence that God wants us to make in our world through his life. And he said that boy swamps and marshes will be not be healed. They will be given over to salt. Along the bank of the river, on this side and that, will grow all kinds of trees. All kinds of trees on the back of the river. Your life, the kind of things that God wants to do with your life, your purpose is going to cause trees, trees, organizations, institutions, companies, ministries to spring. Out in your life. He said along the bank of the river, on this side and on that side, will grow all kinds of trees. All kinds of trees. All kinds of trees. Not plants. So it's not something that will fizzle out in a short time. Something we understand about trees is about the longevity of them. They continue to bear new leaves. And continue to bear new fruits as long as they are connected to water. Your life has such beautiful things that will come out of it. There are trees that will grow around the bank of your river. If you allow your river to flow, if you allow the life of God in you to have expression, there are so many trees on this side and on this side that will grow in your life. When you allow that river have expression, when you allow the life of God in you to have expression, your influence, your legacy will not be short-lived. You will have a lasting impact. And see what, you understand that God does not give you life for yourself. This life is not about you. It's about the people he has sent you to. It's about the people in your influence. It's about the people he wants you to reach out to. It's not a selfish life. See what he says about the trees. He said all kinds of trees that will grow around the bank of your river. He said it will be used for food. It will be used for food. What we know about food is food gives stamina, it gives strength, it gives, it, it sustains the body. You'll be sustaining many. You'll be giving life to many. If you allow this life 
to flow if you allow your river to flow. There will be trees along the banks of your river that will be giving food. That will be giving food. Is your river flowing and you're wondering, what are these trees? You just see, suddenly you're seeing that trees are growing around your river. It should be used for food. Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, I love you. Feed my sheep. The tree that is going to go around the bank of your river, use it to feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. It should be used for food. The influence that God is giving you, the organizations that God is giving you, the ministry that God is giving you, should be used for food. And their leaves would not wither. Ever green, ever fresh. You won't experience dryness as long as you're flowing. As long as your river is flowing, your leaves will not wither. Amen. It won't wither. Amen. And their fruit will not fail. Your fruit will come. And he said, they will bear fruit every month. You'll be fruitful. Amen. When you allow your river to flow, you'll be fruitful. You'll be fruitful. He said, because their water flows from the sanctuary. The source of this life is God, and you must always remember it. When the trees are on the banks of your river are growing and their fruits are coming out every month, remember it should be used for food, and you should remember that the source of your water, because all these things are happening because their water flows from the sanctuary, your river must be sourced in God at all times. Remember it. Because their water flows from the sanctuary. Their fruits will be for food. Amen. And their leaves for medicine. Amen. What does medicine do? Medicine, it suits, it relieves. It heals. We have some medicine that what it does is therapeutic. So, it's to, it's, it's to relieve. Your life must comfort others. The tree, the fruit of your life must comfort others. It must restore hope. Your life is not ordinary. God has given the life that you have in God. Two things you must never forget. As you enter into 2018, your fruit will be for food and your leaves for medicine. The life that God has called us to is not a selfish life. It's not a, it's not a self-centered life. It's a life that is centered around him and his will. And his will is centered around his people. Because his thought towards us is of peace, of good and not of evil. When your river flows, when your river flows, when it flows and you allow the Holy Spirit to walk in you, when you decide to, to follow the 1,000 cubits, that is measuring for you per time and per face, and you're following him, and you're allowing the river, that life of God in you, you're allowing it to spring. You're allowing it to spring, and you're allowing it to flow. Your fruit will be for food, Amen. and your leaves for medicine. Mm -hmm. I believe that's what the Holy Spirit will have me share with us tonight. Mm -hmm. Please do not take the life of God in you for granted. Do not take what you have in God for granted. Come out of that prison. Don't let the devil imprison you with your personality. And say, that's, my, that's just my nature. I don't like talking. I don't like, you know, mixing with people. It's a prison. It's a prison. It's a silent prison that the devil is putting you in. How can your food be for food and your leaves for medicine and you won't reach out to people, you won't mix with people? Mm. It's a life in the pit of hell. And the devil says to you, how much is your how much is your how much is your now? If the devil puts you in a debt. That's a financial prison. You've been single and you're 32. It's a marital prison. And you say, better get married first before you start thinking of the life that you have in God that you want to flow. It's a marital prison. Don't allow the devil to keep you in it. Break out.
Allow the Holy Spirit to break out in you in this season like never before. God is looking for men and women that are willing to flow. God is not looking for people that will contain his water and allow it to stink and be contaminated. God is looking for rivers. God is looking for rivers. God is looking for rivers. And you must be one of those rivers in this season. Tell God, Lord, I'm willing to flow. I'm willing to flow. I'm willing to flow. Ah, no longer will I hold back. Lord, I am willing to flow. Spirit of the living God, Holy Spirit, break out in my life. Break out in my life. I'm willing to flow. Let out of my belly, let it flow. Rivers of living waters. Let it flow to my generation. Let it flow to my nation. Let out of my belly flow rivers of living waters in this season. In the name of Jesus. Father, my rivers flow. My rivers flow in the name of Jesus. There is somebody in the course of this transmission you know and you identify that you have been in a prison and you are saying, how do I get out of this prison? The Holy Spirit said to me, when Paul and Silas were held bound in chains in the prison, the Bible says that Paul and Silas prayed and they sang and the the foundation of the prison was shaking and the chains fell off their hands and they were set free. Open your mouth and pray to God. Open your mouth and sing praises to God in that prison. God is bringing you out. God is bringing you out. In the name of Jesus, man to say, Rabba Shatala also, also, whatever prison you are in, make God your focus. Focus on the Lord and He's bringing you out. In the name of Jesus, man God is bringing you out of that marital prison. It's bringing you out of that financial prison. It's bringing you out of that barren prison. Believe him. Believe him. Be willing to flow. Be willing to flow. The rivers of my life flow. The rivers of my life flow. In the name of Jesus, Mando City in the ocean. Out of my belly flows rivers of living waters. Out of my belly flows rivers of living waters. Out of my belly flows rivers of living waters. Manga shita la malama in the ocean. I do not take the life of God in me for granted. I allow it to have expression. In the name of Jesus. Ah, la in the ocean. Spirit break out. Break out, break out in me. La to zen in the motion. Tanda la ga sun tele boshi. Tahande. Reba ta san tana boshi. Tena pronounce it here. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we give you praise and adoration. Lord, as many as are yelling and I'm crying out to you, Lord. In that prison that they are singing and praising you and praying to you. Lord, break them out of that prison. Let your mighty hand reach out to them in that prison. Let them be set free. Let their rivers flow. In the name of Jesus. As many that there are trees, that trees are growing at the banks of their river. And they are saying, Lord, how do I do it? How do I go about it? Father, give them insight on how they should use their fruit for food and their leaves for medicine. In the name of Jesus. Father, we ask for clarity in this season. In the name of Jesus. As many as their hearts are yearning for you and crying out to you that, Lord, I am ready. Our Lord, I am ready. Holy Spirit, take over. In the name of Jesus. Oh, the Holy Spirit, take over. In the name of Jesus. Teach them what to do. In the name of Jesus. Lead them into our truth, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Father, we celebrate you. We turn all the praise and adoration to you. We thank you for such a beautiful time to be alive and to understand your truth. Lord, we worship you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. It's such a beautiful time. In this season, understand that we celebrate Jesus today because of the life in him. And that life that we have in him, we must not take it for granted. We must allow that river flow. And I believe God.
that 2018 is going to be such a beautiful and wonderful year for the expression of the life of God in you. Mm -hmm. And your life will never remain the same. Mm -hmm. Thank you and stay blessed. Thank you for investing your time with us on Voice, of, Voice from Horizon. I'm Larry Gadidiji. I believe God strongly that you're coming out strong and you're going to...